Hey, what up boys? So, we're doing our live stream predictions a little early this month, and it's most certainly not because I'm completely and utterly out of topics to talk about, and uh, the long wait for Alpha 2 has burned me out beyond belief. No, 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 no. It's because it turns out streaming daily and making YouTube videos constantly is... it's impossible. <laughs> but I'm sure you'll come over and check out our stream at twitch.tv forward slash narcoverse because this month Ashes of Creation is revealing one of their most important key systems. But before we get into that, our beautiful patrons and coped out the wazoo Twitch subs and I would love for you to grab yourself a go back because freeholds in Ashes of Creation are more than just housing. They're more than just a crafting hub. They're more than just account progression. Freeholds are one of the most important systems because they're one of the core systems that open us up to finally get that long-awaited node system reveal. And I'm excited to overhype you all today now. With all that bollocks out of the way, let's begin. Ciao. Whee! So we might as well start off with, what on earth is a freehold? Well, a freehold in Ashes of Creation is a threefold. <laughs> See what I did there? I fucking hate this job. It's a housing plot occupying the physical open world space outside the borders of a node. It's a location players can build personal artisan stations, said to be the only way to obtain the best processing materials in the game. And it is indeed a personalized piece of land that acts as the only currently known safe zone to protect you from Ashes of Creation's open world PvP. Ultimately, freeholds are an extremely important part of player progression and the whole system has been in a very static place for the last two to three years as the game's been in this Alpha 2 development cycle. Freeholds didn't exist in Alpha 1. However, the team did show us two updates related to both player housing and freeholds back in 2020, pre-LP. That being before Lazy Peon's video went viral putting Ashes of Creation in the spotlight. They explain the core mechanics behind their housing systems and a few of the nuanced mechanics behind the freeholds itself. But unfortunately, because Ashes of Creation has gone through so many changes since then, with the world size tripling, some of the core node mechanics changing, and the introduction of a few additional mechanics to supplement the depth of the node system in general, it's hard to really take what was said back in 2020 as canon still. Regardless, if you guys are interested in learning all that you want about the system using autistic over-analyzation and comparison to our currently popular MMORPGs, I have a pretty nostalgic playlist on the channel that explains every possible thing and it's still pretty much up to date despite it being three years old. Now, what I want to do today is talk about the freeholds in relation to Arcage and what I hope we'll see from Ashes of Creation's upcoming livestream because I don't think we're just getting freeholds as a focus this month. No, 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 no. I think they're also going to supplement the showcase with some interesting look at the artisan skills as well. Usually I do one of them cringe Super Smash Bros transitions to move us over to a new segment, but to be honest, I'm thinking about retiring that particular format for now because I'm just bored of it, to be honest. With that said, what does Arcage have to do with this upcoming Ashes of Creation update? Well, as most of you probably know, Arcage is a huge inspiration for Steven when it comes to Ash's core design. They're taking a lot of their interesting mechanics and using it as a base. One of these does indeed include Arcage's open world housing system that has been reworked into their highly anticipated freeholds. Arcage's open world housing was a great idea. It really added a lot of personalization to each server, added some unique socialization as you got to know your neighbors, and it's just made the whole world feel alive. Unfortunately though, over time as Arcage degenerated into the pay-to-win mess that it is today, some of these houses looked, um, 
clownish. <laughs> Basically, in the current year, all housing locations in Arcage are just immersion-breaking, multicoloured shitshows with materials, buildings and farm animals all crammed into tiny pieces of square land. Not ideal, but it, it's just a result of pioneering this particular type of mechanic. One of the great things about Ashes of Creation is that the team at Intrepid can look at how these mechanics succeeded, but most importantly, they can look at it where they fell short and fix them retroactively, and that's exactly what freeholds are. They've taken Arcage's base idea of having open world houses in physical space and curated it to where it's not going to be tiny little clown houses all crammed into a zone because freeholds are instead large plots of land very akin to what you'd expect from Wildstar, and they are exclusive for a few reasons. One, you cannot just place these anywhere anytime. A node needs to be at least level 3 for freehold plots to even unlock. Two, they're large plots of land for players to place many things in, not just a singular house. Three, they're limited to one per account as they're related to the citizenship system. Four, they're spread apart in a massive piece of land as indicated by video demonstrations in 2017. And finally, five, they're going to be difficult to obtain in the first place. So I don't expect your average player to even own a freehold anyway. It is end game progression. And that's okay. Now, with all that said, this is again possibly outdated information, and uh, the most exciting thing about this month's update is getting a bunch of new and updated information with the freeholds in relation to the post tripling of the world map. Were the freehold reworks part of the reason the world size tripled? Did the node changes significantly change the way freeholds work? How much of the world's physical space will these freehold plots take up? All these questions are likely going to be answered this month, and as a copium enjoyer, this is very exciting to me. To end today's video, I, I just want to mention a few of the team's teases during the build-up of this highly anticipated update, which involves crafting and animal husbandry. As Richie very astutely observed during his video, the team have been showing us a plethora of farmyard animals, and as it's stated, freeholds in particular will provide the best processing stations for players. It all fits together nicely because during October's Q&A, Stephen confirmed that animal husbandry in particular is a processing artisan skill now. In the processing, we have metalworking, stone masonry, weaving, tanning, lumber milling, farming, animal husbandry, alchemy, and cooking. I expect to see a heavy focus on this particular part of the freeholds. However, they've also teased another artisan skill, but this one falls within my tentative expectations. During the very same Q&A, Steven explained about the crafting mechanics and how the blacksmithing skill in particular has a gameplay layer that we interact with. There is a gameplay layer to crafting. Um, and those professions that I listed for the crafting, when you go to create a particular item, you will have the opportunity to interface with that gameplay layer. And for example, and this is something you guys will, this will be probably one of the spot tests actually that's coming up before Alpha 2. For example, if you're creating a sword, you will have an interface, a gameplay layer that you will see and you will begin to hammer actually that sword into an appropriate outline. There's a chance we may see that this month, as it's also mentioned that it'll usher in the first of our player spot tests. Very exciting stuff indeed, but again, it's tentative. Mayhaps a dedicated stream for crafting is more suitable than trying to cram all this animal husbandry, housing, and freehold mechanics all into one stream. To conclude today's video though, I want to give you guys what I personally want to see from this month's livestream because obviously animal husbandry stuff is great and the freeholds itself is great and the housing is cool etc 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 but what I really want to see is thus. I hope the stream starts and instead of standing outside an already built 
freehold in the middle of the Riverlands, I hope he starts at the gates of a node with a caravan full of building materials. And he walks to the freehold location and begins to build it from there, then transitions into the usual stuff that we've just discussed. It, it's not so much the mechanics of the freeholds itself that I care about. I have full faith that Intrepid will nail all of these and make the appropriate changes due to player feedback. What I really care about is the core mechanics behind how freeholds exist, the context of their existence in the world, and what it takes to actually build and progress it using the game's mysterious caravan and crate mechanics. But as usual, I am just one nerd desperate for a good MMO, and my opinion means nothing without yours in the comments below. And hey, if you made it this far into the video, you'll probably coked out the wazoo like these Twitch subs here. So why not come over and follow our daily streams at twitch.tv forward slash Narcoverse, and I'll see you in the next one because... Ah, you're high on Topia.